Today on Scripps News Live, family and friends mourn the crew of the Titan after officials confirm all five men were sadly lost. These are risk takers. Risk takers have always driven humanity forward. What we've learned so far about what happened to the submersible and what questions still remain. The Supreme Court siding with the Biden administration in a legal challenge over immigration policy. And one year after the Supreme Court's landmark decision on Dobbs, we're going back to the Mississippi Health Clinic that once stood at the center of the battle over abortion rights. How many people would say to me, you're crazy, they're never going to make this illegal. Um, but they did, they will. How the one-time owner of Jackson Women's Health is still working to serve women in need of abortion care. Scripps News Live begins right now. We begin this hour with late breaking news from the Supreme Court, which has just handed the Biden administration a win in a red state led challenge to its immigration policies. Welcome to Scripps News Live. Thank you so much for being with us on this Friday. It's always good to see you. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. So just after 10 a.m. Eastern, the high court issued its ruling in the United States versus Texas. The high court ruling eight to one that Texas and Louisiana have no legal standing to force the federal government to alter its arrest and deportation policies. Let's get you right out to Scripps News national political reporter Ava Joy Burnett who joins us now live from Washington with the details on this. So, Avajoy, I understand this is all just happening now, but can you break down the Supreme Court ruling for us? Well, Veronica, this was a case where the Department of Homeland Security had certain guidelines and who should be prioritized for deportation. And they wanted to focus on people who had severe criminal backgrounds, and those would be the people who would be deported first. And here is why. In a memo that was sent from the Department of Homeland Security to ICE agents, there was an explanation that they just did not have enough resources to deport all 11 million undocumented people in the United States. But there were two states that soon the Department of Homeland Security, the executive branch, and those states were Texas and Louisiana, and that made it all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court. The argument that these two states were trying to make is that this should be much broader and that more people should be targeted or prioritized is probably a better word for deportation. But this went all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court, and today the justices in an eight-to-one decision decided that the Department Department of Homeland Security, the executive branch, they have the authority to determine who they want to prioritize for deportation. This was an issue of standing, which means that the states didn't have the right to bring forth this lawsuit. The justices were arguing, majority of the justices were um, saying that they didn't have the right to bring forth this, this lawsuit because they weren't injured in this case. So as a result, uh, a lower court's decision was overturned and in favor of the Biden administration, they will now be able to continue with their policy to prioritize the types of people who they want to deport from the United States if they are here illegally. And Veronica, I was able to go back and read that memo that was sent out to ICE. And it's very clear that this is a very, uh, it's a very complex issue because they talk about the 11 million people here and mixed into that group are people who are contributing members of society. These are people who may have jobs. And so they wanted to focus more so on people who may be a national security threat or people who may be a threat to the communities that they live in. So this is no doubt a major win for the Biden administration, but we're seeing some reaction coming in. And I want to read one thing for you that came in from the former Vice President Mike Pence, who is now running for president on the Republican side. And he said, Texas and Louisiana are doing everything that they can to enforce the security at our southern border, despite the crisis caused by the Biden administration's egregious failure to faithfully execute our immigration laws. He went on to say, um, if he becomes president, he will do everything Thing to defend the sovereignty of the United States. But clearly, majority of the justices here, an overwhelming majority of the justices, disagree with the sentiment that Texas and Louisiana had the right to sue the Biden administration to alter their immigration policy, Veronica. All right, Ava Joy Burnett reporting live in Washington. Ava Joy, thank you so much. Developing now the desperate five day search for a submersible missing in the northern Atlantic, ending tragically. The U.S. Coast Guard confirming yesterday the tail end of the Titan submersible was discovered about 1,600 feet from the front end of the Titanic shipwreck. Now that debris was discovered by a remote operated vehicle or ROV on the ocean floor. And a short while later, Oceangate, which owns the Titan, confirmed that all five passengers on board 
had been lost. The Coast Guard says the Titan likely suffered a quote catastrophic implosion, but questions remain about when and where it happened. Senior officials from the U.S. Navy telling the New York Times that a sound consistent with an explosion was picked up by a network of underwater microphones shortly after the Titan lost contact with the surface on Sunday. In the meantime, family and friends have been paying tribute to the five lives lost on board of the Titan, the victims ranging in age from 73 to 19 years old. I want to get you live right now, right out to London, where our correspondent Julia Chapman has been standing by for us. So, Julia, I understand that three passengers on board the submersible were from the United Kingdom. How are they being remembered today? Well, an obituary has been published for the father and son, the Dawoods, uh, Suleiman, uh, who is 19 years old, and his father, Shazada, who is 48. Uh, they were described uh, as being very valued members of the family, much loved. The family spoke of an unfathomable tragedy, saying that they found solace in the belief that they had died hand in hand. Uh, British billionaire Hamish uh, Harding was also described by his family as a dedicated father, a guide, an inspiration, and a living legend. Uh, we've also been hearing tributes to the other members of this cruel uh, crew. Uh, Paul-Henri Nargiolet, the French explorer who had decades of underwater exploration experience. He was known as Mr. Titanic. Colleagues mourned the loss of his experience, saying that he had decades of experience in this field. He was also described by uh, his son as a larger-than-life figure. And a friend of Stockton Rush, the CEO of Ocean Gate, who was piloting the submersible, said that the last of the great American dreamers has been lost. Ocean Gate, the company itself, uh, put out a statement saying that they were true explorers who shared a distinct sense of adventure. And Julie, I understand that there is now a renewed push for stronger regulation when it comes to deep sea exploration. Uh, what are you hearing exactly? Well, this is a field that is still very much in its infancy. It has been compared to aviation in the early 20th century. Uh, many people have been to outer space, many more than have been to the depths of the oceans. Uh, so this is certainly an area that is under-regulated, many experts say. And part of the reason for that is many of these operations, like this one, took place in international waters. OceanGate is an American company. It was launching from Canada. Uh, but by the time it got out into open water, the parent vessel that was uh, sending off the submersible uh, was in international waters, falling under no regulation. That's going to be looked at more closely because the submersible was actually treated as cargo rather than a vessel in its own right. Mm. All right. Julia Chapman reporting live from London. Julia, thank you so much for the update there. We have much more to come for you in this hour of Scripps News Live. President Biden defending comments that he made about Chinese President Xi Jinping in the face of major backlash coming from Beijing. And House Republicans releasing whistleblower testimony that they say proves the Biden administration interfered in an IRS investigation involving Hunter Biden. But first, a Scripps News exclusive political reporter Kevin Cirilli is the first to obtain a letter detailing a new bipartisan effort to investigate reports of a secret Chinese spy base in Cuba. He's going to join us live next. This year, Americans will spend $41 billion on auto repairs. That's right, billions with a B. Why is that number so high? Because cars break down. Your vehicle is going to end up in a shop like this too, and if it's no longer under warranty, you're the one who has to pay the bill, and it could cost you thousands of dollars. That is, unless you call CarShield. With a plan through CarShield, administrators will pay for those costly repairs directly to the mechanic of your choice, including dealerships. That means you get protection on major parts and systems, like the engine, transmission, electrical systems, and more. Plus, 24-7 emergency services for flat or damaged tires, lockouts, dead batteries, and towing at no additional cost. And there are even rental car options to keep you on the road. I've been a mechanic for 35 plus years. I've seen thousands of repairs over the years. My happiest customers are the ones that come in do have some kind of auto protection policy that's gonna cover the repair that they wasn't expecting anyway. I feel great about recommending CarShield to everybody I see. CarShield has a rich history of dependability, reliability, and success, and has been featured on leading networks like ABC, CNN, Fox News, and more. CarShield is America's most trusted auto protection company. 
My mom told me to call Car Shield, and I saved $5,000. You should always listen to your mom. As soon as my car broke down, Car Shield jumped into action, and I had my car back within days. I've been with Car Shield for close to seven years. I have three vehicles covered, and I saved close to $9,000. I called Car Shield and saved over $5,000. Yes, Car Shield is a good value. Every plan through Car Shield comes with a price slot guarantee, which means no matter how many repairs you need, the price you pay today will never change for as long as you cover your car. Call now and save money with your price lock guarantee. It's not a matter of if your car will break down, but when. Call Car Shield now before it's too late. Call 800 287 5264. 800 287 5264. 800 287 5264. Municipal bonds don't usually get the media coverage the stock market does. In fact, most people don't find them all that exciting. But if you're looking for the potential for consistent income that's federally tax-free, now is an excellent time to consider municipal bonds from Henyon & Walsh. If you have at least $10,000 to invest, call and talk with one of our bond specialists at 1-800-465-8465. We'll send you our exclusive bond guide, free, with details about how bonds can be an important part of your portfolio. Henyon & Walsh has specialized in fixed income and growth solutions for 30 years and offers high-quality municipal bonds from across the country. They provide the potential for regular income, are federally tax-free, and have historically low risk. Call today to request your free bond guide. 1-800-465-8465. That's 1-800-465-8465. All right, it is 12 minutes after the hour now. Let's get you to a Scripps News exclusive. Lawmakers from both sides of the aisle and both chambers of Congress demanding answers about reports that China has established a spy facility in Cuba. Scripps News national political reporter Kevin Cirilli was the first to obtain this letter sent by Democratic Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey and Republican Congressman Michael McCall of Texas. This letter sent to Secretary of State Antony Blinken. I want to get you right out to Scripps News National Political Correspondent Kevin Cirilli in Washington. Kevin, a great job obtaining this information. What have you learned so far? What are you hearing on the Hill right now? Tensions are continuing to mount between the U.S. and China over growing concerns that China is developing a spy facility on Cuba located just 90 miles from the continental United States. And now Congress is taking notice bipartisan group of lawmakers are calling on Secretary of State Antony Blinken and CIA Director William Burns to brief Congress amidst growing concerns China is building a spy facility on Cuba. According to a letter obtained first by Scripps News, Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chairman Robert Menendez, a Democrat from New Jersey, and House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Mike McCall, a Republican from Texas, write that, quote, it is imperative that we understand in full detail the exact nature and objectives of the PRC's intelligence gathering in Cuba and military partnership with the regime, the implications of such efforts for U.S. national interests, and what the Biden administration is doing to mitigate such efforts and deter their further expansion with Cuba and the Western Hemisphere. The Wall Street Journal reported earlier this month that Cuba has given China the green light to build an eavesdropping facility on the island, while Cuba and China have pushed back against the report. Recently, the Biden administration revealed that China has had a spy base in Cuba since at least 2019, after at first denying the existence. Trump administration officials have said that they are not aware of intelligence reports or the existence of a Chinese base in Cuba during their time in office. But during a Sunday appearance on CNN, former Defense Secretary Mark Esper said, quote, he would not be surprised, end quote, if one existed. During Blinken's meeting last week with Chinese leader Xi Jinping, the Secretary of State said he made it very clear in Beijing that the U.S., would have deep concerns about China increasing its intelligence or military activities in Cuba. And now, officially, so does the U.S. Congress. Did you raise the listening post in Cuba that was recently disclosed and we talked about? I did. I'm not going to characterize their response, but I told them that this is um, a, a serious concern for us. Now, Chairman Menendez and Chairman McCall are asking for the CIA and the State Department to answer a series of questions about these reports regarding Cuba and China. And they're asking for answers, Veronica, 
by July 14th. July 14th. All right. In the meantime, this is all happening on the heels of Blinken's trip. And then and then, of course, some comments that President Biden made about Chinese President Xi. Kevin, remind us again exactly what happened and how it's been playing out and how that might factor into all of this. Well, Biden's calling Xi Jinping, the leader of the Chinese Communist Party, a, quote, dictator, end quote, has seen swift pushback from China's Communist Party. But separately, here in Washington, D.C., Republicans are quietly praising Biden's comment with regards to calling him a dictator. Uh, and in fact, yesterday I spoke with Morgan Ortegas, the former spokesperson to now former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who said that she agreed with that comment. She said point blank, Xi Jinping is a dictator. He is a thug, as Biden has previously referred to Xi Jinping. And it all comes as there has been this debate in Washington, D.C., amongst policymakers as well as thought leaders about what is the proper title for Xi Jinping. He is not an elected president in the same way that democracies elect a leader of a nation. Is he, as Secretary, former Secretary Pompeo referred to him as the general secretary, uh, Xi Jinping? Others have referred to him as leader Xi Jinping. Uh, because, again, a communist nation doesn't elect a president. Yeah, these are all good questions. Uh, all right, Kevin Cirilli, live for us in Washington. Kevin, great job breaking this story. We appreciate it. Thank you. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, House Republicans releasing whistleblower testimony that they say proves the Biden administration interfered in an IRS investigation of Hunter Biden. We'll have that for you next. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeapGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait, you've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Are you or a loved one between the ages of 50 to 80 years old? If you are younger than 80 years old, do you receive Social Security, Disability, or Medicare? If you answered yes, you may qualify for $30,000 in funeral insurance for only pennies a day. The average funeral costs around $11,000, and Social Security only pays $255, leaving your loved ones to pay the balance. Call now to see if you qualify for $30,000 in funeral expense coverage from Senior Legacy Life. Your rate will never increase. Your benefits will never decrease, and there is no medical exam, even even if you have a free existing disease or illness. Don't be a financial burden to your family. Lock in your rate by completing an application over the phone right now. Will you qualify for funeral insurance up to $30,000 for only pennies a day? Find out by calling Senior Legacy Life. Call 1-800-300-5808 to speak with a licensed insurance agent. That's 1-800-300-5808. We really don't want people to think of feeding food like ours as spoiling their dogs. Good, real food is simple. It looks like food, it smells like food. It's what dogs are supposed to be eating. No living being should ever eat processed food for every single meal of their life. It's amazing to me how many people write in about their dogs changing for the better. The farmer's dog is just our way to help people take care of them. There's a better way to begin your mornings. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Rush. Thanks so much for being with us. Context and conversation. There's a new study that might make you feel a little bit better. Okay. okay. Mm. Listen to this. Are the stories that will shape each day. Here with us now is meteorologist Scott Withers. You got just wave after wave after wave. So you can get on with yours. Make sure you stay with us as we monitor this developing story. Morning Rush. Weekday mornings starting at 7, 6 central. Only on Scripps News.
Meeting now at the White House, President Biden and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi hosting a summit of business leaders from the U.S. and India. This meeting comes one day after both leaders announced new agreements on a variety of economic matters, including trade, solar power investments, and space exploration. One of the biggest deals unveiled yesterday involves U.S.-based memory chip firm Micron, which says it's investing as much as $825 million into a new chip assembly plant on the western coast of India. And last night, the president and first lady ruled out the red carpet for Prime Minister Modi at a state dinner in his honor. Many of Washington's most powerful people attended that black tie affair, at which President Biden and Prime Minister Modi toasted to the partnership between the U.S. and India. To the everlasting bonds of friendship between India and the United States. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Because neither drinks alcohol, the president and prime minister toasted one another with glasses of ginger ale. A push by conservative Republican House members to impeach President Biden is now in a congressional committee for consideration. Colorado Representative Lauren Boebert and her allies using House rules to force a snap vote on the resolution. And it charges Biden with high crimes and misdemeanors over his handling of the border with Mexico. But I got a whole lot of constituents in Texas who think that the President of the United States and the Secretary of Homeland Security are failing to do their job. So they want, they want that addressed. And if I don't see accountability taking place with Joe Biden um, in, in a timely manner, there's always the option to bring up another privileged res resolution and call to impeach Joe Biden. I would love to see it done this year, and I, the sooner the better. Earlier on Morning Rush, we spoke with Clark Cunningham about the increasing frequency of impeachments. He's a professor in law in ethics at Georgia State University. He has written extensively about presidential impeachments. Take a listen. When the framers of the Constitution included impeachment in the Constitution, they actually thought that it might be a fairly regular process. Um, you know, the, and I think even today we would agree that the uh, Office of the Presidency is probably you know, too, too powerful. And so having investigation by the House that might or might not lead to articles of impeachment is probably a healthy process. The way Congresswoman Boebert has handled the matter uh, has created a little bit of turmoil within the GOP. She essentially is trying to, uh, to fast track this thing even before House investigations into the administration um, are done. So kind of the compromise reach a little bit was to send this to a committee, uh, in other words, buying time while the fuller investigation <laughs> moves forward. It's political weeds, uh, you know, to, to be clear here. But do you find some solace in the fact that at least it wasn't directly to uh, a floor vote and, and instead was is kind of being um, staggered uh, somewhat in terms of just how this procedurally is supposed to work? Well, sure, that's the flip side of having the House of Representatives uh, engage in impeachment investigations on a regular basis. Um, and that is that the process needs to be objective and fair and thorough um, to, to take the, the phrase that the former president is very fond of, witch hunt. Uh, you know, witch hunt uh, historically was, you know, punishing people based on malicious rumor without objective fact finding. And so what you don't want is for House impeachment proceedings to be a witch hunt. Uh, they need to be done in a thorough, objective, uh, fair manner. Um, and certainly having the uh, investigation go through a committee is an important first step. So this latest proposal by Boebert says that the president violated his oath of office by failing to enforce immigration laws and failing to secure the U.S.-Mexico border against fentanyl. We know about that crisis. How in line with the impeachment clause of the Constitution's, with the Constitution are these allegations? Well, you know, I've been doing a lot of work uh, researching uh, the meaning of the words in the Constitution. Uh, the Constitution says that the vice president uh, shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. Um, and I've been doing a lot of work uh, with a professor of linguistics here about what is what is the phrase high crimes and misdemeanors mean. I think it's pretty clear it does not mean maladministration. Um, it, it means... Uh, it, it's not limited to crimes, but the, the uh, founders considered having impeachment for uh, ineffective administration by the president and rejected that language in favor of this language. So I think uh, what uh, Representative Bobard is talking about probably does not fit 
the constitutional definition of high crimes and misdemeanors. Now, in the meantime, the president's son was spotted at the state dinner for India's prime minister last night. It was Hunter Biden's first public appearance since his plea agreement was announced. He's agreed to plead guilty to two tax misdemeanors and has struck a deal to resolve a felony gun charge. His appearance at the dinner is the latest show of President Biden's steadfast support of his son. In the meantime, two IRS whistleblowers claiming the Justice Department interfered with their lengthy investigation of Hunter Biden. The Justice Department denies the allegation. House Republicans released testimony from the whistleblowers yesterday saying that the department slow walked the investigation and delayed enforcement actions. Still unclear whether they described uh, an internal disagreement on how to proceed or if it was interference and preferential treatment. Well, today, the president's focus will be shifting to his administration's efforts to protect reproductive rights. At 4 p.m. Eastern, the president now expected to sign an executive order bolstering access to contraception. He's going to be joined at a signing event by the First Lady, as well as Vice President Kamala Harris, also Second Gentleman Doug Emhoff. Now, according to the White House, the executive order will give the Treasury and Labor Departments, as well as Health and Human Services, the power to compel private insurance companies to cover some birth control products. It's also going to direct those agencies to look for ways to improve access to over-the-counter contraception. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, a year after the Supreme Court's landmark decision on Dobbs, we're going back to the Mississippi Health Clinic that once stood at the center of the battle over abortion rights. It's illegal, um, but they did, they will. How the one-time owner of Jackson's Women Health still working to serve women in need of abortion care. Plus, why a vast majority of OBGYNs are blaming new abortion restrictions for an increase in pregnancy-related deaths. Also, we'd like to hear from you. You can give us a call on our Scripps News Viewer hotline toll-free. That number is on your screen right now. It's one 833 scripps Feel free to share your comments and your story ideas. Attention all seniors, you can now get up to $50,000 for your funeral and other final expenses, including your credit card debt, with no medical exam, starting at less than a dollar a day. Oh, honey, you're dead and I can't stop talking about this baby that's coming. We've also been thinking a lot about our future, and no matter what, we want to make sure we aren't leaving you and your family with any of our debts. Just last week, we read that the price of a funeral can be $8,000 or more. Wow, Jeff and I definitely would not have the money to pay for that. And that's just a funeral. But you don't have to worry. We called, and with one phone call, we were eligible for $50,000 for our funeral and final expenses. Well, that's great, but don't you need to take a medical exam to qualify? You and Mom have some health issues. No. There's no medical exam, and we were able to get coverage right over the phone. And our rates can never be increased, our benefits can never be decreased, and our coverage can never be canceled. I'm so glad you made that call. Don't leave loved ones with your debt. Call 800-339-7996 now and see if you qualify for up to $50,000 for your funeral and other final expenses starting at less than a dollar a day. There's no medical exam and you can be approved even if you have pre-existing health conditions. Your rates can never be increased, your benefits can never be decreased, and your coverage can never be canceled. There's no obligation. Call 800-339-7996 now. There's no paperwork. No no hidden fees and no waiting periods and you can start coverage right over the phone starting at less than a dollar a day call 800-339-7996 that's 
Hey there, welcome back to Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz, TGIF. Congratulations, you made it to Friday. Thank you so much for being with us. Let's get to speed right now on the biggest stories that we're tracking for you. Happening now at the White House, President Biden and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi hosting a summit of business leaders from the U.S. and India. This meeting comes a day after both leaders announced new agreements on a variety of economic matters, including trade, solar power investments, and space exploration. One of the biggest deals unveiled yesterday involves U.S.-based memory chip firm Micron, which says that it is investing as much as $825 million into a new chip assembly plant on the western coast of India. In the meantime, President Biden has been defending his public comments on China, including calling President Xi Jinping a dictator. It all comes just days after Secretary of State Antony Blinken wrapped up a visit to China aimed at improving ties and communication. Beijing reacted to the remarks with a formal protest. But President Biden says he won't be changing his blunt statements very much. I expect to be meeting with President Xi sometime in the future, in the near term, and uh, I don't think it's had any real consequence. President's remarks coming as he welcomed India's Prime Minister to the White House in a move to boost that alliance. And the Supreme Court has handed the Biden administration a win in a red state-led challenge to its immigration policies. The high court ruling 8-1 to one in the United States versus Texas that Texas and Louisiana have no legal standing to force the federal government to alter its arrest and deportation policies. A year after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, the effects have been felt across the country. Beyond politics, one group has seen a dramatic impact. According to a new national survey by the Kaiser Family Foundation, half of OBGYNs practicing in states with abortion bans reported that their patients were unable to obtain abortions. 40% of OBGYNs say that they feel limited in providing care for miscarriages and other pregnancy-related emergencies since the court's decision. It's also affected the availability of contraception. Usha Ranji is one of the contributors to the survey and is the Associate Director of Women's Health Policy for KFF. And she spoke with our friends earlier on Morning Rush. Really what we heard was a lot of concern about maternal health um, and about patient safety. So, um, you know, about seven in 10 um, doctors across OBGYNs across the nation said that they think that um, the Dobbs ruling has actually had you know, major impacts, has had made pregnancy-related mortality um, and racial and ethnic inequities in maternal health, which are already high, um, potentially making them worse. Well, in the United States as a nation is one of the farthest behind in maternal mortality rates. Um, so, as you said, that only getting worse is not good for moms in America and families in America. We talk about the changes though that you've seen um, that doctors have reported in patients seeking contraception since the Dobbs ruling. How has that changed? Sure, sure. Um, we asked about, we asked um, OBGYNs, you know, have they seen um, changes in patients asking for various methods of contraception? And more than half said that they have seen, um, had an increase in patients um, requesting contraception. And in particular, where they see um, the largest increases are um, patients uh, requesting sterilization services, getting your tubes tied, um, as well as long acting methods, um, IUDs and implants in particular. But um, there were rises kind of across the board with other hormonal methods as well. And really the effects were, again, were more pronounced in states that have banned abortion, which at this point about a quarter of states um, have banned abortion. And 68% of OBGYNs say the ruling has worsened their ability to manage pregnancy-related emergencies. What does that mean in real-world terms? How is the availability of OBGYN's um, use of, you know, being able to provide those needed in a minute and those really dire situations been impacted? Yeah, well, you know, in states where um, abortion is banned, as well as there are several states that have really... Um, you know, strict restrictions on being able to provide abortion abortion services only up to a certain point in pregnancy. Um, but what I think a lot of people don't realize is, um, you know, what that really means is that in those states, OBGYNs don't can't provide um, the full range of services that they've been trained for. And you know, one very concrete way is you know miscarriage care, for example. Miscarriages are very common, and 
I think sometimes people don't realize that the same medications and procedures that are used for abortions um, are also often used to care for somebody who's experiencing a miscarriage or, um, you know, and that might be early in the pregnancy or particularly later in the pregnancy, it's often the same, um, the same services. Now, all the state laws that have banned abortion do include language for exceptions, um, say in the case of, you know, life threat to the pregnant person, but they're often vague and, and also and not necessarily workable. So clinicians may not feel that they can provide the care that they would ideally do without fear of, um, you know, say, criminal penalty. And that was Usha Ranji appearing on Morning Rush earlier. A Mississippi clinic was at the center of the Supreme Court's decision. The Jackson Women's Health Organization is now closed. The building has been turned into a, a consignment shop. And a year later, national correspondent Tammy Eswick has been speaking with a former owner of the clinic. Take a listen. How many people would say to me, you're crazy, they're never going to make this illegal, um, but they did, they will. When a conservative majority U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade a year ago, sending abortion legality decisions back to the states, some were shocked. But not Diane Derzis, the former owner of the Mississippi Abortion Clinic, at the center of the case. You know, those of us that have been providers have seen this coming. In June 2022, this now unassuming white building in the middle of the artsy Fondren district of Jackson, Mississippi, was pink, iconic, and home to the state's only abortion clinic for almost two decades. Derzas ran the clinic even amid fierce opposition, protests, lawsuits, and sometimes violence on the steep street that led to the clinic entrance. Today, the Pink House staff have relocated to a place she calls Pink House West. So they've just moved to New Mexico where they've been warmly welcomed. It's amazing, a completely different environment from what they were accustomed to. Um, but, you know, women can be seen there, unfortunately. Um, that's not true in the state of Mississippi any longer. Derzas has been fighting for abortion rights for decades. In the 1970s, after the Roe decision, Derzas worked as a counselor. And when they opened the first clinic in Alabama, I just drove them crazy until they hired me. A serial bomber struck that Alabama clinic in 1998. He killed an officer who was working as a security guard and he maimed one of the RNs who was there and who lives with this to this very day. As years passed, Derzas watched the political tide turn. States like Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi began proposing bills chipping away at abortion rights. Eventually, Derzas moved to Jackson. They got smarter as time went on. Then they began in the courtrooms, um, in your local races, and they built from there to be in a position which they're in now, and that's to completely take over a state. I came to this capital in 1986. On the other side, Terry Herring runs one of the biggest pro-life organizations in the Magnolia State, Choose Life Mississippi. Over the last 35 years, we've passed many laws. Among them, a trigger law, which immediately banned abortion in Mississippi when the Supreme Court issued its decision against Jackson Women's Health Organization. Many here now wondering, What's next? And they're coming after your birth control next. Do you hear any rumblings of them going after birth control? And by them, I mean legislators. <laughs> that is so far from where we want to, to go with our legislature and our push. To me, you turn it into that, that into a health question. Is it really healthy for women to be on hormones from the time they're 14, 15, 16? Hopefully not until they're 18, but you know, is that a healthy thing for women? This past March, facing Democratic criticism that he didn't care about life after birth, Republican Governor Tate Reeves expanded Medicaid for mothers. And to encourage adoption, lawmakers are pledging to reform foster care services in Mississippi, along with other ideas. Those that have money will get. They've always gotten. You know, you can catch a plane and be there in an hour. But those who don't have money, and from the states that we know all too well, they're the ones forced to have children. Durses hopes abortion clinics will be back in Mississippi sometime soon. But for now, she is focusing on her other clinics, 
from Virginia to New Mexico. Tammy Eswick, Scripps News, Jackson, Mississippi. And tonight we invite you to join us for a Scripps News special report one year after the Dobbs decision, how abortion access in America has changed and what changes are still to come. Abortion in America, What's Next, airs tonight at 8, 7 Central on Scripps News. Coming up in the Sarah Scripps News Live, Colorado cleaning up after another rocky night of weather. We're tracking the system that spawned a tornado last night in Denver, hammering areas with all of that hail that you could see right there. Also, after dozens of concert goers after customer cuts and broken bones during a hailstorm at Red Rocks, we're talking to experts who say that venues can do more to protect fans in the event of inclement weather. We'll tell you what they said after this. I've been putting off getting life insurance and I'm not getting any younger. Have you been thinking about getting a life insurance plan but just keep putting it off? Was that a yes? Then this message is for you. I'm David Denowitz and I know the importance of life insurance. And that's why I'm here to tell you it's not too late to get the coverage you need. If you're between the ages of 45 and 85, you can get a policy with a benefit of up to $25,000 and rates available at $5 a week. The phone lines are now open. Just call 800-354-6059. And your acceptance is guaranteed. I have a pre-existing medical condition. Is my acceptance guaranteed? Yes. Can I get accepted without a medical exam? Yes. If you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down for this guaranteed acceptance life insurance regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. And rates start at just $5 a week. Remember, if you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. Nothing's more important than family. So call now, pick up the phone, and get guaranteed acceptance life insurance today. Just call 800-354-6059. I'm 72 and on a fixed income. Is my acceptance guaranteed? Yes, your acceptance is guaranteed and your rate can never go up for any reason. You can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's just one simple question. Are you between 45 and 85? If you answer yes, don't wait another minute. Call now. The call is absolutely free and there is no obligation to enroll. Just call 800-354-6059. That's 800-354-6059. One way to avoid expensive car repair bills is to be a race car driver. The other is endurance. Endurance saved me more than $7,000. Without endurance, breakdowns can cost thousands. With endurance, you're covered. Endurance covers nearly every car on the road. Plus, you pick the mechanic you trust. Act now for $300 off any plan, plus a year of elite benefits and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call 1-855-588-2580 now. One year since the end of Roe vs. Wade. Look at what's changed. What exactly does it mean to have the life of the mother at risk? Abortion in America, tonight at 8, 7 Central on Scripps News. Happening today, some of the biggest names vying for the chance to challenge President Biden in the 2024 presidential election will be speaking with voters at a key political event in Washington. The Faith and Freedom Coalition holding its conference this weekend in the nation's capital. And Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, former Vice President Mike Pence, and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie are all among the candidates who will be taking the stage this afternoon. Colorado finds itself shaken after another round of severe weather. Take a look at this. Cleanup and damage assessments now underway in part of the Denver metro area. Storms battering communities with damaging winds and large hail yesterday. A tornado touching down in Highland Ranch damaging homes 
knocking down trees and causing power outages. Now, as of last night, no injuries have been reported. The governor approved a verbal declaration of disaster emergency. And severe weather alerts have been in place throughout the weekend. Meteorologist Scott Withers has been tracking it all for us and has more on that tornado that swept through that Denver suburb. Scotty? A second round of strong storms hit that Denver area, spinning up a tornado, dropping damaging hail. Now, that tornado was on the ground for about six miles in the Highlands Ranch area that's just south of Denver. Fortunately, most of the damage was just minor. Baseball-sized hail, listen to that right there. Pelting the Mile High City in the suburbs, the National Weather Service issuing a particularly dangerous situation warning. Now, the EF1 tornado packed winds of 97 miles per hour, damaging roofs, toppling trees, and, and knocking out power to thousands more than uh, and more than 140 flights at the Denver International Airport were canceled. 800 were delayed. The storm comes just a day after hail injured 100 people at that Denver area outdoor concert. All right, in the Atlantic, tropical storm Cindy spinning up. You can see her right there. She's the new one spinning up. Now, the good news is going to be a fish storm. Going to stay way out of sea. Not going to problem anybody. Maybe visiting Bermuda next week. But then back here, Brett, he is on track to slam into Central America next week. Not going to cause a problem for the U.S. Now, on the national satellite, we've got rain moving across northern and central Florida right now. Going to be a rainy day there. Another system out here in the southwest. You can see it. That's going to intensify. Going to cause problems in the Oklahoma and Texas panhandles. And up here, this is that system that caused that tornado and all that hail in Denver now moving into the Dakotas and into Nebraska and that's where we are going to see our severe weather alerts today enhanced risk of strong storms large hail and tornadoes across the upper plains the risk also in the southwest we got that heat dome still sitting over the Lone Star State with excessive heat warnings in the red we've got red flag warnings almost the entire state of New Mexico nearby and then look up there in the uh, upper uh, upper Midwest there, all of the gray, Chicago through Wisconsin, all the way through Minneapolis and St. Paul. Those are those air quality issues from the Canadian smoke, ozone and heat all mixing together. The storm threat pushes across the Ohio River Valley on Saturday and ends up in the mid-Atlantic areas on Sunday. Scotty, thank you so much for that. So dedicated fans will be facing rain, sleet or snow to attend their favorite artist concerts. But when conditions intensify, so does the risk of injuries. And unfortunately, dozens of concert goers at an outdoor venue in Colorado got caught in a powerful storm. Scripps News correspondent Vanessa Mashania spoke with event safety experts who say that concert venues need to do a better job. Music fans from across the country are gearing up for a full slate of outdoor summer festivals and concerts. But one thing concert goers can't always prepare for, Mother Nature. Oh my God. A severe hailstorm Wednesday injured nearly 100 attendees of a Lewis Tomlinson concert at the Red Rocks Amphitheater outside Denver. All of a sudden, people started like running. They were tripping over each other. Screaming we're trying to run for agony, cover. Like... The concert for the British pop musician was eventually canceled, but not before seven people were transported to hospitals with non-life-threatening injuries. The local fire department said other injuries included cuts and broken bones, and attendees inside the venue described the 10-minute storm as apocalyptic. Several said they were trapped with no clear shelter at the venue. So we tried to get to the gate so we could get to our car, but they closed the gate, I guess, for like flood, flooding stuff so we didn't get swept down the hill. And so we were all just like, to yeah, we were, yeah, we were all just huddled around each other. When I heard about the debacle at Red Rocks, at the concert, I thought, here we go again. You can't hope it misses. You can't hope it passes by. You can't hope it's not as bad. You just can't hope. You have to be prepared. And I think this is where we're going to look at this instance and go, how can we be better? Experts like Paul Wertheimer, who specializes in crowd safety, and Kevin Claysell, a meteorologist with the Event Safety Alliance, say that outdoor concert venues and organizers need to do better to protect attendees from severe weather emergencies. Before the concert at the Red Rocks Amphitheater, the National Weather Service issued a severe thunderstorm warning for the area. Experts predicted extreme winds, hail, and tornadoes. So there's this mentality, in my opinion, of let's just try to make it through the night. They played that Russian roulette game with the safety of the fans, and the fans lost. Wertheimer says the concert venue, which is owned and operated by the city and county of Denver, and the concert promoters, in this case Live Nation Entertainment, should have better informed concert goers of the extreme weather conditions and provided a more thorough emergency weather plan in advance. Scripps News reached out to Live Nation Entertainment, but spokespeople were unavailable for comment. A city spokesman told the Denver Post the incident was a, quote, once-in-a-lifetime event. 
On Twitter, Red Rocks Amphitheater told attendees to seek shelter in their vehicles, but shortly after gave them an all clear to return to the amphitheater and then eventually canceled the concert due to the hailstorm. You have to be able to to plan for a place to put people. And by just saying go to your cars or something like that, you know, so many people ride share to our events now. They don't have a car. While there were no severe reported injuries at Red Rocks, safety experts say weather emergencies have long plagued outdoor music events. In 2011, it was a disastrous weather-related concert at the Indiana State Fair. Seven concert goers were killed because they didn't cancel the show in advance. And actually, just three months ago, another concert was interrupted by a severe storm in Belvedere, Illinois. One person, a concert goer, was killed. Scores were injured. Wertheimer says there needs to be more pressure on public authorities and concert promoters to prevent more weather-related disasters. And for fans attending future outdoor concerts to be mindful of a venue's exits and shelters, just in case. Vanessa Mishanya, Scripps News. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, a French-born basketball phenom now taking his Texas-sized talent to San Antonio. We're going to have that and much more from the first round of the NBA draft. That's after a quick break. I was having problems with my legs and my feet. I suffered a lot of cramps, swelling. I would dread going up and down steps. Tingling in my legs due to circulation issues. The, the aches and pains uh, have just continued to increase. Did you know if you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, or are over 40, your leg aches and pains could be from poor circulation? Revitive can help reduce leg aches and pains, swelling, and cramps. Revitive uses breakthrough technology to get your calf muscles pumping like a second heart to increase blood flow, reducing leg aches and pains, cramps, or swollen feet and ankles. Plus, it's drug-free. The cramping was terrible, and I don't get that anymore. Thank you, Revitive. Revitive is FDA cleared and clinically proven to increase oxygen-rich blood flow during use. The smart stimulation works so well, over 3 million people use Revitive. As a firefighter, I'm constantly on my feet. I wish I had known about Revitive a lot earlier. Um, it would have made a huge difference in really who I am today. Revitive has given me a better quality of life because I am living without pain. Revitive reduces leg pains two times more than exercise alone in just six weeks. We want to take walks. We want to do more social activities. Just the typical things in life that I did not feel well enough before Revitive that I was able to do. Yeah, Revitive is regenerizing my legs and making me feel like, let's do more. Go to Revitive.com now to learn how Revitive can help reduce leg aches and pains, swelling, and cramps. The doctor said, go for it. And I'm in the best shape in terms of my legs and my ankles and my feet than I've ever been. Try Revitive. You will see the difference. It works. It worked for me. Get the most out of life with Revitive. Visit Revitive.com. That's R-E-V-I-T-I-V-E.com. Or call 1-800-317-6641. That's 1-800-317-6641 today. Or visit Revitive.com. Order now. At Omaha Steaks, we do burgers differently. We take a premium aged steak like this and turn it into a pure ground burger like this. So this is actually a ribeye. This is a New York strip, top sirloin, beef brisket and this this is a filet mignon for a limited time our burger perfection flight comes with 20 big juicy burgers all for just 79.99 plus free shipping get it today at omahasteaks.com slash tv this is burger perfection guaranteed how can a photo become a vibrant part of your home? When you go to TryFracture.com and print your images directly on glass. Get beautiful depth and clarity on a sleek, frameless print that's easy to hang and looks incredible in any space. Go to TryFracture.com now to save 20% on glass prints. All month long, Scripps News is shining a light on awareness, sharing stories of perseverance, and going inside the communities now fighting for their rights. Scripps News presents the stories of Pride Month, all month long, only on Scripps News. 
Don't forget, we'd like to hear from you. You can give us a call on our Scripps News viewer hotline toll free. That number is on your screen. It's one 833 scripts Feel free to share your comments and your story ideas. So he is being called a phenom and one of the greatest basketball prospects since LeBron James. Seven foot five Victor Wembenyama, who is just 19 years old and from France, is the number one pick in this year's NBA draft. He's going to be testing his skills on a pro level in the United States, rocking a San Antonio Spurs jersey. But with his impressive reputation playing in the French League, the Spurs are confident about their choice. Emotions filling Wembenyama after he heard the NBA commissioner call his name. Accomplishing something that I've been dreaming of, you know, my whole life. Hearing that that sentence from Adam Silver, you know, I, I've dreamed of it so so much that, you know, I, <laughs> I gotta cry, man. Congratulations, Tim. What a moment. And the Thompson twins stamping their place in NBA history without ever gracing the court. Eamon and Alsar Thompson, the first pair of identical twins to be taken in the top five of, the, of this draft. Eamon went fourth overall to the Houston Rockets. And the Detroit Pistons took Alsar at number five. And then ironically, the Thompson twins' success mirrors the moments that they entered the world. Born just a minute apart, the brothers have now entered the NBA one pick apart. Congratulations to them as well. So the head coach of the University of Connecticut men's basketball team is walking the walk and he is talking the talk. Not only did two of Dan Hurley's players get drafted last night, but he's set to be one of the highest paid coaches in the NCAA. Hurley reportedly has agreed to a nearly $33 million six year contract. He led UConn to its fifth national championship this year and the Huskies are expected to be a preseason top 10 team in the upcoming season. Tonight, you can get ready for some action. You can witness four WNBA teams as they turn up the heat to try to secure a spot in the playoffs. The State Farm Friday Night Spotlight on ION features the New York Liberty traveling south to take on the Atlanta Dream. Tip off 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And then it is off to the West Coast where the Los Angeles Sparks are going to be hosting the Dallas Wings, and that's going to happen at 10 p.m. Eastern. Well, Saturday marks one year since the Supreme Court's decision in Dobbs versus Jackson's women's health, a decision that effectively overturned Roe v. Wade. And today, President Biden and the First Lady will be joined by Vice President Harris and Second Gentleman Doug Emhoff at an event in support of reproductive rights. And the president is planning to sign an executive order strengthening access to birth control. We're going to have a full report on that in your next hour of Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Thank you so much for joining us on this Friday. Don't go too far because we are back after this. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait, you've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. If you're living with diabetes, this is the sound that could change your life. Great news for people living with diabetes. Now you can wear a continuous glucose monitor and eliminate routine finger sticks. The days of repeated painful finger sticks are over. Call 800-719-8907. If you use insulin daily to manage your condition, a continuous glucose monitor could help you control your diabetes and reduce or eliminate those painful finger sticks. If you have Medicare or private insurance, US Med can deliver a CGM system right to your door. And if you qualify, there may be little or no cost to you. Shipping is free and we'll even bill your insurer directly. 
Call now to get your continuous glucose monitoring system so you can take control of your diabetes and get back to enjoying life. Call 800-719-8907. That's 800-719-8907. Hey there, thank you so much for staying with us on this Friday afternoon. TGIF, congratulations, you made it to Friday. It is now 1 p.m. in the east and 10 a.m. out west. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. Tomorrow marks one year since the monumental Supreme Court ruling that overturned Roe v. Wade. In the past year, Democrats haven't been able to advance a single bill to codify abortion rights to President Biden's desk. And right now, about 25 million women live in states where laws are making it harder to get an abortion. Let's get you right out to congressional correspondent Nathaniel Reed, who's live for us in Washington. So, Nate, one year, it's been one year now since the Dobbs decision was handed down. What does the fight for abortion access look like right now in Congress? Well, Democrats in both the House and Senate held events across Capitol Hill this week, marking this one year since that Dobbs decision. Effectively, their message is we're not giving up the fight on expanding abortion access. Take a listen. As we approach the anniversary of the cataclysmic Dobbs decision, it's an honor to stand with my colleagues here today to say loud and clear, Democrats will never never stop fighting to protect a woman's right to choose. And Democrats, as you can see here, have expanded their majority in the U.S. Senate. There are 51 Democrats to 49 Republicans. The issue for Democrats with passing any sort of comprehensive abortion uh, access bill uh, is the fact that you need 60 votes in the U.S. Senate to bypass the filibuster in order to pass those into law. Over in the House of Representatives, Democrats, they are also keeping up the fight toward abortion rights and abortion access. Take a listen. Democrats, we believe in a woman's freedom to make her own reproductive health care decisions. As Democrats, we will continue to stand on the side of women. We will continue to stand on the side of reproductive freedom. We will continue to stand on the side of access to health care, because abortion care is health care. Bit of an opposite issue, though, in the House of Representatives for Democrats. Democrats are right now in the minority. In the last Congress, they were in the majority. They were able to pass the uh, multiple uh, bills which would codify abortion access during the 117th Congress. But during the 118th Congress, where there is a Republican majority and a Speaker Kevin McCarthy, there isn't a whole ton that Democrats can do. That's not to say that they haven't kept trying to pass expanded abortion rights and abortion access. The problem is the numbers in either chamber of Congress are just not in their favor. Uh, well, speaking of uh, Congress, we've talked a little bit about the Democrats. Let's go ahead and look at, you know, the Republican side of the House of Representatives. Given that there is a Republican majority here, Nate, could Republicans pass additional restrictions when it comes to abortions? Well, Republicans have tried to pass several messaging bills with regard to abortion. But remember, it all comes down to the Senate's 60 vote threshold. Let's take a look again at the balance of power in the Senate. Well, Democrats control 51 votes in the U.S. Senate. Republicans control 49. You need 60 votes to pass the vast majority of legislation in order for that to become law and to send it to President Biden's desk so he can sign it. Without those 60 votes, uh, even with the... Um, even with the majority that they have there, there isn't a whole ton that can happen. For that reason, because there aren't 60 votes on either side, it's unlikely that Republicans would be able to pass any additional abortion restrictions into law. Furthermore, Biden is an important backstop for Democrats and for supporters of abortion access, given that he has said he would veto any attempt by a Republican Congress to enact additional restrictions on abortion. Nathaniel Reed reporting live from Washington. Nate, thank you so much. So this has certainly been an important issue for the Biden administration, and that's where White House correspondent Haley Bull is standing by and covering the story for us. So Haley, how is the White House planning to mark one year since the Dobbs decision was handed down? Veronica, they have made abortion really a priority since the Dobbs decision, and their approach has been uh, multi-pronged. It's taking action where their authority allows them to, 
working with state leaders uh, to further promote abortion access uh, and making their case through the courts, through the Justice Department. Now, today, the president is issuing his third executive order since the Dobbs decision. This one's solely focused on contraception. contraception. And what it does is it directs agencies uh, to look at, consider guidance uh, to improve access and affordability through private insurance under the Affordable Care Act, through Medicare, Medicaid, uh, and for federal employees and service members. Now, officials believe uh, this will increase options, lower costs, uh, and raise awareness on the paths to access this. Uh, but there's no timeline set for this. Rather, the administration views this as laying out where the president sees his priorities and what they call uh, a roadmap for these agencies. But it does build on their efforts uh, to improve access to not only contraception, uh, but emergency medical care and to protect privacy of health information. Uh, but still, the White House is calling on lawmakers to take steps uh, to protect those rights that were in Roe v. Wade. But in a divided Congress, uh, there's really no path forward for that at this moment. Listen. There is progress um, that we you know, have seen, but I think it's also important to remind uh, our, your viewers and ourselves at this point that um, that really the, the consequences have, um, I don't think devastating uh, is too strong a word. That said, you know, again, the president was really clear, even in the hours after the Dobbs decision came down and certainly in the weeks after that the and continues to make this point um, that really the only way to replace a constitutional right um, is by passing federal legislation. And that's what we are committed to continuing to fight for. And Veronica, the president is expected to give remarks later today, and the vice president will give uh, a major speech in North Carolina where abortion has been uh, a significant issue to mark one year since the Dobbs case. And uh, this will build on a flurry of events over the past week uh, here at the White House on that. Other events included uh, a roundtable with women impacted uh, and convening dozens of state leaders uh, here at the White House as well, Veronica. All right, Haley Bull live for us there in Washington. Haley, thank you so much. And we will continue this conversation in less than 30 minutes from now. Rachel Fay, who is the Vice President of Policy and Strategic Partnerships with the organization Power to Decide, will be joining me live to discuss the impact of the Supreme Court's decision, also the future of reproductive rights policy. Again, that is straight ahead at 1.30 p.m. Eastern. So the Supreme Court in the meantime also handed down the Biden administration to the Biden administration today a win in a red state led challenge to immigration policy. The high court ruled eight to one that Texas and Louisiana have no legal standing to force the federal government to alter its arrest and deportation policies. Scripps News national political reporter Abajoy Burnett breaks down the ruling for us. Well, the Biden administration received a major win today from the U.S. Supreme Court. This involved a case where the Department of Homeland Security set to put forth enforcement guidelines and who they should prioritize for deportation. And they wanted to pretty much prioritize people who have major criminal backgrounds or pose a risk to national security. But there are two states that sued because they wanted to have a broader scope here. And those two states were Louisiana and Texas. They wanted for the Department of Homeland Security to prioritize deportation of even more people. This case made it all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court. And the court decided today in an eight to one decision that these states did not have standing. They didn't have the right to bring forth this lawsuit. Now, this is something that has garnered quite a bit of attention, including from the former Vice President Mike Pence, who said Texas and Louisiana are doing everything that they can to enforce security at our southern border, despite the crisis caused by the Biden administration's egregious failure to faithfully execute the rules. Of course, there are some people who are celebrating this move, including immigration attorneys. Executive branch must be able to pick and choose where they can do an enforcement policy because we cannot remove the 11 million plus individuals of this country. And what the Biden administration set out to do is that this is our parameters for doing this. This is our execution of the law. And that's what the Supreme Court got behind today in a very remarkable number. So as an immigration attorney, I'm ecstatic that they told them that they don't have standing because this also speaks to other policies that may follow in the immigration realm, as well as policies that may be from somewhere else if we allow states 
every time to have standing in these procedural ways, our executive branch becomes a non-functioning branch of government. Now, of course, tis the season for these major cases to come down from the U.S. Supreme Court. We were already waiting to hear about an affirmative action case involving Harvard University and the University of North Carolina. There's also that massive student loan case that could potentially affect 40 million people. And there's also a freedom of speech case out of Colorado. We could see an additional 10 or so cases between now and next week. We've also been told that there's a possibility that decisions could also come down in July. Average Roy Burnett, Scripps News, Washington. And coming up next on Scripps News Live, we're learning more about the father and son killed on the Titan submersible on a voyage to the Titanic wreckage. We're also going to take a closer look at the role that technology played in the search and discovery of that missing submersible. Also, don't forget that you can always count on Scripps News for all of your headlines throughout the primetime hours beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern. We're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. I was having problems with my legs and my feet. I suffered a lot of cramps, swelling. I would dread going up and down steps. Tingling in my legs due to circulation issues. The, the aches and pains uh, have just continued to increase. Did you know if you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, or are over 40, your leg aches and pains could be from poor circulation? Revitive can help reduce leg aches and pains, swelling, and cramps. Revitive uses breakthrough technology to get your calf muscles pumping like a second heart to increase blood flow, reducing leg aches and pains, cramps, or swollen feet and ankles. Plus, it's drug-free. The cramping was terrible, and I don't get that anymore. Thank you, Revitive. Revitive is FDA cleared and clinically proven to increase oxygen-rich blood flow during use. The smart stimulation works so well, over 3 million people use Revitive. As a firefighter, I'm constantly on my feet. I wish I had known about Revitive a lot earlier. Um, it would have made a huge difference in really who I am today. Revitive has given me a better quality of life because I am living without Revitive reduces leg pains two times more than exercise alone in just six weeks. We want to take walks. We want to do more social activities. Just the typical things in life that I did not feel well enough before Revitive that I was able to do. Now, Revitive is regenerizing my legs and making me feel like let's do more. Go to Revitive.com now to learn how Revitive can help reduce leg aches and pains, swelling, and cramps. The doctor said, go for it. And I'm in the best shape in terms of my legs and my ankles and my feet than I've ever been. Try Revitive. You will see the difference. It works. It worked for me. Get the most out of life with Revitive. Visit Revitive.com. That's R-E-V-I-T-I-V-E.com. Or call 1-800-317-6641. That's 1-800-317-6641 today. Or visit Revitive.com. Order now. Municipal bonds don't usually get the media coverage the stock market does. In fact, most people don't find them all that exciting. But if you're looking for the potential for consistent income that's federally tax-free, now is an excellent time to consider municipal bonds from Henyon & Walsh. If you have at least $10,000 to invest, call and talk with one of our bond specialists at 1-800-465-8465. We'll send you our exclusive bond guide free with details about how bonds can be an important part of your portfolio. Henyon & Walsh has specialized in fixed income and growth solutions for 30 years and offers high quality municipal bonds from across the country. They provide the potential for regular income, are federally tax free and have historically low risk. Call today to request your free bond guide. 1-800-465-8465. That's 1-800-465-8465. Family and friends paying tribute to the five lives lost on board the Titan. The submersible went missing Sunday while on a journey to tour the Titanic wreckage. Among the deep sea explorers were two British Pakistani citizens, businessman Shahzada Dawood and his 19 year old son. Our South Asia correspondent Rebecca Bunden takes a closer look at the father and son and has their story. 
Shazada Dawood was a billionaire and one of Pakistan's wealthiest men. The 48-year-old was killed in what is understood to be a catastrophic implosion as the submersible descended to the ocean floor to view the wreck of the Titanic. Family and friends have expressed their devastation as they mourn the loss of the businessman described as a good and kind man and his son Suleiman, just 19 years old, who was also in the submersible. Mr. Dawood was known for his love of travel and adventure and he was a big fan of science fiction. His son Suleiman was studying in Glasgow in the UK at university and Mr. Darwood also leaves behind a wife and a daughter. Mr. S uh, Mr. Darwood's company, his business conglomerate, is based in the city of Karachi in Pakistan. It's into areas including agriculture, technology and energy. Now, in an interview, Mr. Darwood's sister talked about his son, Suleiman, expressing his concerns and his feelings of terror ahead of the trip. But the family have spoken about the strong friendship between the two men and they decided to go ahead with the ill-fated trip which coincided with Father's Day. Rebecca Bundon, Scripps News, Mumbai. Now the focus for researchers shifts to what's caused the implosion that led to the deaths and the Coast Guard says the Titan likely suffered a quote catastrophic implosion. But questions remain right now about when and where that happened. Senior officials from the U.S. Navy reported a sound consistent with an explosion picked up by a network of underwater microphones shortly after the Titan lost contact with the surface on Sunday. The Navy reportedly shared that information with the Coast Guard. And yesterday, the Coast Guard shared the tail end of the Titan submersible and that was discovered about 1,600 feet from the front end of the Titanic. A remote operated vehicle discovered a field of debris on the ocean floor. A number of resources were involved in this days long effort. National correspondent James Packard has more now on the technology that helped find what was left of the Titan. Deep under the surface of the North Atlantic Ocean, this remote operated vehicle found a field of debris which the Coast Guard confirmed is from the tourist submersible missing for days on a voyage to view the Titanic. Right now, um, it isn't optimal. Don Walsh is an oceanographer who made a record deep dive into the Mariana Trench. ROVs are a lousy search platform. Once you have a target, you know where something is or you're very close to it, then the ROV is the thing you want because you can leave it down there uh, almost indefinitely because it's powered up from the surface. But without an emergency beacon on board Ocean Gate Expedition's Titan, search teams didn't have a great place to start. The vessel has the ability to search with video and acoustics and conduct inspections with robotic arms. The Coast Guard says debris from the pressure chamber where the five people on board sat was found just 1,600 feet from the bow of the Titanic, prompting questions about why, over several days of searching, there was no sign of the sub sooner. The Coast Guard saying it didn't hear the implosion during the search. We've had sonar buoys in the water uh, nearly continuously and have not uh, detected any uh, catastrophic events uh, when those sonar buoys have been in the water. And the ROV wasn't the only player on the field. In the skies above the search area, planes like this one, an HC-130, supported from above, while ships on the surface, including this French vessel carrying the ROV, ferried crews and equipment to the search area. A massive effort captured in these Maxar satellite images from above. New scans brought fresh insight into the pre-existing debris field around the Titanic. New 3D scans released in May showed the century-old wreck like never before, perhaps helping searchers differentiate between what was already on the seafloor and the new debris from the Titan. And there are many pieces of the, the stern, the uh, bow of the Titanic and all sorts of pieces that fell off during that wreck. Uh, that's one of the problems in trying to find the submersible on the seafloor. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. James Packard, Scripps News, Los Angeles. Not as many low-income kids are participating in fitness activities. Coming up next, a look at why and what's being done to change it.
Mom, we're so glad you're feeling better. You gave us such a scare. I know, honey, me too. But I want you to know I'm at peace with my home going when my time is up. And did I also tell you that I got coverage for my funeral so you and your brother would not have to worry about expenses? I didn't know you were saving money for your final expenses. I haven't. I called Open Care, and with one phone call, I was eligible for $30,000 for my funeral and final expenses. That's wonderful, Mom, but how did you pass your medical exam with your health condition? Oh, that's the best part. No medical exam is needed. That's right, and my rates can never increase, my benefits will not decrease, and my coverage will never be canceled. Mom, I'm so glad you called. Mm -hmm. You can now get up to $30,000 in life insurance coverage to help pay for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam, and you can be enrolled with just one phone call. Your rates can never be increased, your benefits can never be decreased, and your coverage can never be canceled. Call the number on your screen now and see how a final expense life insurance plan can help you. We don't want to leave our loved ones with debt. The cost of a funeral can be $8,000 or more. A final expense life insurance plan will pay up to $30,000, which can be used for funeral and other final expenses. Call 800-790-5695 now for your free information. You can now get up to $30,000 in life insurance coverage to help pay for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam, and you can be enrolled with just one phone call. Your rates can never be increased, your benefits can never be decreased, and your coverage can never be canceled. Call the number on your screen now and see how a final expense life insurance plan can help you. There's no obligation. Call 800-790-5695. That's 800-790-5695. Sure, you'll teach her to drive a car. Then use Greenlight and teach her to save up for her own car. Mowing lawns and getting paid. Navigate the world of earning, saving, and investing together. Invest in your best investment. Greenlight. Folks, the league is in absolute chaos. Come down to some rookie taking free from the The Athletic. Subscribe today. Sunday nights on In Real Life. Then for the baby? Yeah! <laughs> Scripps News journalists take you off the grid. We were just a bunch of kids with a camera. Stunts have become more specialized. And to the heart of the story. When the pandemic hit, the American dream kind of changed. There were a lot of warning signs. They just didn't care. In Real Life, Sunday at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News. Quick reminder right here, we'd like to hear from you. You can always give us a call on our Scripps News viewer hotline, toll free. That number is on your screen right now, 1-833-4-SCRIPPS. Feel free to share your comments and your story ideas. Across the country, fewer low-income young people participating in physical fitness activities than those whose households have more money. And experts have been calling it the physical divide. National correspondent Jesse Cohen breaks down why the problem has gotten worse and how advocates have been trying to fix it. There's this concept called the physical divide that's worrying parents and educators across the country. Well, we're showing you exactly what it means and why it's so important for kids to be exposed to physical activity. Okay, we're gonna run down and back, ready? There is nothing quite like a kid's excitement, the joy they feel when they get to run around. But that release of energy is happening less for children who come from lower income communities. For the last decade plus, since 2007, some of the research is showing that um, there's been a huge decline in youth sports. As a physical education professor at Metropolitan State University, Denver, new Win Seedum says there are a number of barriers that are creating this physical divide. One of the most prominent is cost. As we talk about youth club sports, those traveling teams are, they range from $2,000 to $7,000 a season. A common denominator for access to these physical activities could come from K through 12 education, putting all students on the same playing field. However, a recent report from the Physical Activity Alliance gave schools nationwide a grade D minus for physical fitness. That's a decrease from their C minus in 2014. I think the more that we can get to talking to lawmakers and decision makers about um, adding back in 
priority legislation so that money is also going to kids' movement. Prioritizing funding for physical education programs on the government level is one solution. Another is partnering with boots on the ground organizations. Oh, they're going to be so excited. So we are the largest social sports company in the U.S. Nate Stoliker is the managing director for Volo Sports in Denver. And after the Freddie Gray incident that happened years back, uh, they, our leadership team got together and was like, how do we give back to the community? How do we help solve this gap that's there? And that's when the Volo Kids Foundation was founded. Currently operating in Baltimore, Washington, D.C., New York City, Boston, Denver, San Diego, and San Francisco, Volo's Kids Foundation offers free youth athletic leagues that remove barriers to athletic participation. Where do you trap the ball? Under your foot. Okay, where else? Uh, On your bottom. No. No. Nope. I've been doing just a lot of like outreach of letting parents and families and schools know that this is an option in case they can't afford to drop like thousands of dollars on club soccer or like club rugby or try a new sport. Coach Molly is going to be chest trapped. As the kids program and outreach coordinator for the 501c3 Volo Kids Foundation in Denver, Kenzie Williams sees the impact every day. The growth and the confidence has been the coolest thing to see in kids. Can I be going around? They know cost isn't the only barrier. It's why they partner with a local nonprofit that provides transportation for the kids. Other hurdles that need to be recognized are language barriers and health. One of the things that came up in one of the more recent surveys is that families and students were worried about the risk about injury. The more roadblocks kids face, the less access they have to the cognitive, social, and emotional elements that come with participating in fitness activities. Before we break it out, I want to see your best goal celebration dance. Oh, celebrate. Teamwork is a skill that translates sports into your adult life. I can't say enough for missing those components at an early age really puts them further behind. Advocates say this is an issue that's been exacerbated by the pandemic. However, the gap will only get worse unless further change is implemented. So not only is it financial, it's health, it's pandemic, it's transportation, right? It's literacy piece. It's a number, a myriad of pieces that combine to create that widening gap between the have and have not. Two, three, follow! Jesse Cohen, Scripps News, Denver. Happening today, some of the biggest names vying for the chance to challenge President Biden in the 2024 presidential election will speak to voters at a key political event in Washington today. The Faith and Freedom Coalition is holding its conference this weekend in the nation's capital. And Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, former Vice President Mike Pence, and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie are among the candidates who will be taking the stage this afternoon. Coming up next, the stigma around infertility issues, keeping some men from getting the treatment that they need. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, one family is sharing how asking the right questions led them to becoming parents. Also, tomorrow will mark one year since a constitutional right for women was struck down. We're going to speak with an expert on what life is like one year after Roe v. Wade was overturned. And as we go to break, a quick reminder right here to follow Scripps on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and on TikTok. We'll be right back. I've been putting off getting life insurance, and I'm not getting any younger. Have you been thinking about getting a life insurance plan, but just keep putting it off? Was that a yes? Then this message is for you. I'm David Denowitz, and I know the importance of life insurance. And that's why I'm here to tell you it's not too late to get the coverage you need. If you're between the ages of 45 and 85, you can get a policy with a benefit of up to $25,000 and rates available at $5 a week. The phone lines are now open. Just call 800-354-6059. And your acceptance is guaranteed. I have a pre-existing medical condition. Is my acceptance guaranteed? Yes. Can I get accepted without a medical exam? Yes. If you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down for this guaranteed acceptance life insurance regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. And rates start at just $5 a week. 
Remember, if you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. Nothing's more important than family. So call now, pick up the phone, and get guaranteed acceptance life insurance today. Just call 800-354-6059. I'm 72 and on a fixed income. Is my acceptance guaranteed? Yes, your acceptance is guaranteed and your rate can never go up for any reason. You can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's just one simple question. Are you between 45 and 85? If you answered yes, don't wait another minute. Call now. The call is absolutely free and there is no obligation to enroll. Just call 800-354-6059. That's 800-354-6059. Hey there, welcome back to Scripps News Live. It is now half past the hour. Thank you so much for spending some time with us on this Friday. Always good to see you. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Let's get you caught up right now on the day's top stories. The tragic end of Titan's expedition to the wreckage of the Titanic has been raising questions about the safety of adventure tourism. All five people on board died in what the Coast Guard is calling a catastrophic implosion. A U.S. Navy official told the New York Times underwater sensors registered readings that were consistent with an implosion shortly after Titan lost contact with its mothership on Sunday. And Pakistan's interior minister is saying that about 350 Pakistanis were on board that fishing boat that sank off the coast of Greece last week. He said many are missing and are feared dead. An estimated total of 700 migrants were on board that boat. Greece has been widely criticized for not trying to save them before the boat sank in international waters. Greek officials are saying the passengers refused help. The Supreme Court handed the Biden administration a win in a red state-led challenge to its immigration policies. The high court ruling 8-1 to in the United States versus Texas. Justices ruled Texas and Louisiana have no legal standing to force the federal government to alter its arrest and deportation policies. So one year ago tomorrow, the Supreme Court struck down a five-decade-old constitutional right for millions of women around the country. And I'm talking about the Dobbs decision, the Supreme Court decision that overturned Roe v. Wade and ended the federal right to an abortion. Now, since that ruling, 14 states have full bans on abortion. Several more have new laws limiting access, and women have been forced to travel thousands of miles and across state lines for access to abortions. Americans' views, though, have remained unchanged since thousands surrounded the Supreme Court and protested abortion bans. Recent polls show us that a majority of Americans support support abortion access in the United States. Rachel Fay joins us now live. She is the Vice President of Policy and Strategic Partnerships at Power to Decide. Rachel, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. Rachel, what are your thoughts on this one-year anniversary of the Dobbs decision overturning Roe v. Wade? What have you been saying exactly? Um, Well, I think the harm that we've seen the last year has been dramatic and inequitable, like every other aspect of reproductive health care. So as you said, you know, we now have 14 states where there's no abortion providers able to provide care and more states trying to join that group every day or to severely restrict abortion access. And the result is people having to travel you know, thousands of miles to get care. And that's the people who can travel. Um, as our CEO, who's a practicing OBGYN, would tell you, what she worries most about are the people that can't travel to get care and are forced to carry pregnancies that they don't want or are a risk to their health uh, to term. So, you know, that, that in and of itself is just heartbreaking. And then to see providers have to say no to their patients when they're qualified to provide care, uh, to not provide you know, high quality miscarriage management um, for fear of legal repercussions. You know, all of these things are playing out. And I think it's just been a heartbreaking year. Yeah, to your point, this ruling also impacts miscarriage care for women, which could be potentially life threatening. And it's something a lot of people don't really take into account. There was a study that was done by the Kaiser Family Foundation that found that 42 percent of OBGYNs are concerned about those legal risks that you just mentioned. And sometimes they have to make these difficult decisions, even when the health of the mother is at risk. How do you see this playing out, Rachel? What type of impact do you think that this is going to have on the medical profession as a whole? 
Um, well, we're already beginning to see people choosing where they want to practice medicine or where they want to study medicine and trying to avoid uh, doing so in states with bans or severe restrictions, which is only going to exacerbate the challenges that people in those states face in terms of accessing reproductive health care overall, as well as, you know, the nation as a whole faces a maternal mortality crisis that's particularly dire for Black women, uh, who are three times more likely than white women to die uh, in childbirth or immediately after. Uh, so, you know, we're seeing we're seeing trends that I think are only going to make reproductive health care and the outcomes that we have in this country, which are already, you know, pretty terrible, uh, even worse. And, and I think people are really angry and upset about that. I wanted to talk about what's happening at the federal level right now, because President Biden is going to be signing his third executive order on abortion rights today. And this one's going to have to do with contraception. Um, what type of effect are these executive orders having? So I think the devil is always in the details with executive orders. So we'll be watching to see how we can help, you know, federal agencies to operationalize this. But it's an excellent executive order, and the focus is on improving access to contraception and protecting it. I think what people may be less aware of is that in addition to restrictions on abortion access, which were pervasive even before the Dobbs decision, that there are significant barriers to contraceptive access as well. Uh, roughly 19 million women in the U.S. who are in need of publicly funded family planning live in what we call contraceptive deserts. Those are counties where they lack reasonable access to a clinic that offers the full range of contraceptive methods. So we were already in, in a tough position when it comes to contraception. And so we're really excited that the administration is taking these steps. We think they are, you know, desperately needed, and we'll be ready to work with them to make sure that this really is operationalized and women are able to get the reproductive health care they need. But I will say that at the federal level, there's only so much that can be done right now when it comes to abortion access. And it's really, really important for people to, to think not just about their federal elected officials, but their state elected officials and what those state legislatures are doing right now. So we've seen a wave of attempts to restrict abortion access at the state level. And that's somewhere where people need to continue to engage with their lawmakers. So what do you think the future looks like then in terms of abortion access in the United States? Are you hopeful that America goes back to when Roe v. Wade was still in effect? Speaking of political implications, how do you feel the 2024 presidential race is going to play into all of this? So I think what we are seeing time and again in the polls you just referenced, in the polls that we saw after the midterm elections, you know, people want abortion to be legal. They oppose the Dobbs decision. And I think more and more understand the nuance um, associated with pregnancy and childbearing and, and how that is really something that shouldn't be left to policymakers, but rather to patients and their doctors. And so I think, you know, what we're seeing since the Dobbs decision is not really a change in where people are uh, in terms of their position on this issue, but the, the level of intensity of feeling about this as the harms play out in real time. And I think that that has consequences for, for you know, policymakers that they need to think long and hard about. But I also think, you know, when we talk about the future, we need to be thinking about building back better than Roe. You know, Roe was the floor, not the ceiling. For, for millions of people, it still wasn't enough to get them abortion access when they needed it, um, particularly if they lived in states that banned uh, Medicaid coverage of abortion, if they lived in states where there were severe restrictions that put up barrier after barrier and hurdle after hurdle to their care. So I think now, you know, in, in the wake of Dobbs, we need to be thinking about what it really looks like to, to make abortion care meaningfully accessible for everyone. And that's the world we're going to build back uh, in the coming years. And that's what I'm what I'm hopeful and optimistic about, particularly given the level of engagement that we have seen sustained in the last year when it comes to this issue. All right. Rachel Fay is the vice president of policy and strategic partnerships at Power to Decide. Rachel, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.
And don't forget, you can join us tonight for a Scripps News special report one year after the Dobbs decision, how abortion access in America has changed and what changes are still to come. Abortion in America, What's Next, airs tonight at 8, 7 central only on Scripps News. So the portion of Interstate 95 in Philadelphia that collapsed about two weeks ago reopened this afternoon. Pennsylvania's governor said the state was able to make repairs ahead of schedule and six temporary lanes have been open to drivers. The road collapsed after a tanker truck caught fire and I-95 is of course a major route for commuters and beachgoers in Pennsylvania, Delaware and New Jersey. Coming up next, research shows that male infertility is increasing, yet conversations on the topic are rarely discussed. It makes you think as a man, you know, like, am I really the, the perception of a man, right? I can't even hypothetically reproduce like everyone else out here. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, why stigma might play a role in the increase. That's next. Welcome to the place where people go to learn about their Medicare options before they're on Medicare. Come on in. You're turning 65 soon? Yeah. And you're retiring at 67? That's the plan. Well, you've come to the right place. Now's the time to plan ahead. Learn about an AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan from United Healthcare, And how a plan like this helps you take charge of your health care with lower out-of-pocket costs. Here's why. Medicare alone doesn't pay for everything. Your deductibles and co-pays could add up to hundreds, even thousands of dollars a year. Everyone's a little surprised to learn that one. Adding a Medicare supplement plan helps pay some of what Medicare doesn't. And that could mean fewer surprises and more predictable out-of-pocket costs. Call United Healthcare and ask for your free decision guide. Or talk with a licensed insurance agent or producer to learn more about plan benefits, options, and rates. Medicare supplement plans let you choose any doctor, any specialist, anywhere in the U.S. who accepts Medicare patients. You don't have to deal with any networks or referrals. This kind of plan also goes with you anywhere you travel in the country. If you're turning 65 soon or over 65 and planning to retire, find out more about the only Medicare supplement plans endorsed by AARP. Thumbs up to that. Remember, the time to prepare is before you go on Medicare. Don't wait. Get started today. Take charge of your health care. Call United Healthcare for your free decision guide and learn more about lowering your out of pocket Medicare costs and seeing any doctor who accepts Medicare patients. Oh, and happy birthday or retirement in advance. At Omaha Steaks, we do burgers differently. We take a premium aged steak like this and turn it into a pure ground burger like this. So this is actually a ribeye. This is a New York strip, top sirloin, beef brisket, and this, this is a filet mignon. For a limited time, our burger perfection flight comes with 20 big juicy burgers, all for just $79.99, plus free shipping. Get it today at omahasteaks.com slash TV. This is burger perfection guaranteed. Sure, you should teach him to ride a bike. Then use Greenlight and teach him how to invest in bikes. Teach him to be smart about money and he'll go far. Super far. Oh, hey, Mom. Navigate the world of money together. Invest in your best investment. Greenlight. Local, national, and worldwide headlines. Breaking down the day's biggest stories with live reporting from around the globe. I'm Del Walters, and this is The Debrief. Live tonight, starting at 6, 5 central, only on Scripps News. Welcome back. So children across the country right now are being urged to take a break from Baby Shark. I know I'm not talking about that song, you know, the really catchy viral song, Baby Shark. Toymaker Zuru recalling these, more than 7 million Baby Shark bath toys. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission says that the hard plastic top fin can seriously injure a child. The manufacturer received at least a dozen reports of children seeking medical attention. So the FDA has been urging retailers to hit the brakes on selling flavored disposable e-cigarettes, including the most popular brand, Elf Bar. It's one of several brands of disposables that aren't FDA approved, and regulators have been trying to crack down on these products that often come in fruit and candy flavors. And these are more likely to attract younger smokers. 
The FDA sending nearly 200 warning letters to stores still selling them. June is Infertility Awareness Month, and today we're highlighting a part of the conversation not often discussed, male infertility. Rochelle Aline with Scripps News Tampa shares the journey of two couples facing obstacles when it comes to growing their families. For Josh and Nicole Goldstein, the journey to parenthood started in 2019. No vacations this year, or next year, or the next five years, okay. But they soon realized there was a problem. We had tried for a while, it wasn't working, so we thought something might be wrong. Testing revealed fertility issues caused by several medical procedures that Josh had undergone. When I was two or three months old, I had a hernia procedure and some of the scar tissue from the procedure caused a blockage. Um, and then uh, 2008, I had uh, testicular cancer. Data from the American Society for Reproductive Medicine shows that in up to 40% of cases of infertility, a male partner plays some role. But a quick Google search on the topic shows that much of the research and discussion centers mostly on female infertility. And in the beginning, we didn't tell anyone what was going on um, because we were navigating it. I mean, it was really scary. Um, we didn't know where to go. I had have, I've had friends that have gone through this before, mostly female infertility. And it's a journey of isolation that the Chednowskis can relate to. You maybe feel like an outlier, which makes you feel like this journey will be impossible and that you can't talk to other people about that. The couple says they're still on their journey to parenthood almost a year after receiving devastating news. We were able to kind of come to a conclusion that I was a carrier of cystic fibrosis, which was the reason why I was unable to have children the, the normal way, I guess I can say. Makes you think as a man, you know, like, am I really the, the perception of a man, right? I can't even hypothetically reproduce like everyone else out here. So that was a tough pill to swallow. We do some male fertility procedures here like a... Dr. Jonathan Balin is a local urologist that specializes in male infertility. And he says much of the isolation that both couples initially faced can be traced back to how we as a society think about fertility and what it means to be a man. I think part of the stigma is that fertility is such a, a female-driven factor. It's almost their responsibility, which is completely a falsehood. This is a, a couple's thing where we go into it together as a partnership. There's so many men avoid doctors in general or just don't talk about their sexual function or fertility because it's a, it's a machismo thing. You're, you're, you're you know, trying to talk about their manhood. When it comes to the causes of male factor infertility, Dr. Balin tells us the range is wide, but the treatments often fall into three categories, lifestyle changes, surgery, or medication. When a patient comes in, it's kind of my job to identify what's causing this male factor fertility and can we identify it and can we reverse it or can we help correct it? But in order to get more men into offices like his, Dr. Balin adds that we all have to change our thinking. I think we have to rethink the concept of seeking help and seeking a provider or looking at professional advice. It's a mindset change that the Chednowskis say ultimately helped them address fertility issues and they're now moving forward with IVF. It feels so amazing. Like we, there was a long period of time we did not know if we could have children, so um, it's great. Teacher salary. <laughs> And for the Goldsteins, a fertility workup, surgery, and IVF helped them welcome baby Harper into the world in 2022. She started walking about two months ago, and so walking has progressed to speed walking, to almost running. Um, she has her hands in everything now. We've had to lock up lots of things. I feel like we cherish like every individual moment and still to this day, like, look at her, like, I can't believe you're here, that you're ours. The Goldsteins are now discussing baby number two. I'm Rochelle Aline for Scripps News. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, parents forming stronger bonds with their kids with a tech-free summer. And then that developed our bond as parent and child because when we started doing activities, I got all the information. The tips that you need to know to get your kids to embrace more in-person activities. 
Plus, America's next innovative inventors may come from the Sunshine State. We're going to meet two elementary students gaining national attention for their ideas. We'll be right back. Mom, we're so glad you're feeling better. You gave us such a scare. I know, honey. Me too. But I want you to know I'm at peace with my home going when my time is up. And did I also tell you that I got coverage for my funeral so you and your brother would not have to worry about expenses? I didn't know you were saving money for your final expenses. I haven't. I called Open Care and with one phone call, I was eligible for $30,000 for my funeral and final expenses. That's wonderful, Mom, but how did you pass your medical exam with your health condition? Oh, that's the best part. No medical exam is needed. That's right, and my rates can never increase, my benefits will not decrease, and my coverage will never be canceled. Mom, I'm so glad you called. Mm -hmm. You can now get up to $30,000 in life insurance coverage to help pay for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam, and you can be enrolled with just one phone call. Your rates can never be increased, your benefits can never be decreased, and your coverage can never be canceled. Call the number on your screen now and see how a final expense life insurance plan can help you. We don't want to leave our loved ones with debt. The cost of a funeral can be $8,000 or more. A final expense life insurance plan Plan will pay up to $30,000, which can be used for funeral and other final expenses. Call 800-790-5695 now for your free information. You can now get up to $30,000 in life insurance coverage to help pay for your funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam, and you can be enrolled with just one phone call. Your rates can never be increased, your benefits can never be decreased, and your coverage can never be canceled. Call the number on your screen now and see how a final expense life insurance plan can help you. There's no obligation. Call 800-790-5695. That's 800-790-5695. Another weekend spent running errands. Hang on, I wonder if I can Instacart some of this stuff. I need to get paint for the deck, more cat treats and litter, and essentials for the week. Wow, Instacart's saving me trips to multiple stores which means I can actually enjoy my Saturday and finally have time to play catch with the kids. When you want to run errands without running in circles, the world is your car. Visit instacart.com or download the app and get free delivery on your first order. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then Worthy sent Lila her money. You're worthy of more. Get started at worthy.com. You're watching Scripps News, streaming everywhere, totally free. Want to see more? Grab the app on your favorite streaming platform or go to ScrippsNews.com to find every way to watch. Go to ScrippsNews.com now to find out more. One year since the end of Roe vs. Wade. I would fought for the right to abortion prior to Roe v. Wade. It is upsetting because abortion is upsetting. A Scripps News special report looks at what's changed. What exactly does it mean to have the life of the mother at risk? And what's next? It may feel hopeless, but resistance always matters. Abortion in America, tonight at 8, 7 central on Scripps News. So social media comes with benefits, but many doctors are sounding the alarm on its negative effects. Now that summer vacation is in full swing, parents are finding it difficult to balance day-to-day -day life with screen time for their children. I'm one of those. Scripps News correspondent Amber Strong sharing some advice from experts to help you incorporate a tech-free summer for your little ones. It's summertime, which means the fish are jumping, the sun is shining, and in American households across the country, the fingers are scrolling. In this backyard art studio in Virginia, little hands are hard at work. There you go. Mama four, Laura Shea Lovett, says when she exchanged video games for paintbrushes, something happened. I didn't have to pull teeth. I actually seen them opening up more. And then that developed our bond as parent and child because when we started doing activities, I got all the information because they were comfortable. <laughs> The longtime artist used her kids' love of gaming and social media and turned it into daily art projects like this. We would do bath bombs and then name it or color it 
some type of skin from from like Roblox or My Little Pony or SpongeBob. This part's gonna be really easy. Don't you ain't gotta overthink it. You know, shake your shoulders off. Teaming up with fellow artist Dimitri Nelson, that side project blossomed into an art-filled summer camp for area kids. It's healing. It's fun. It takes your mind off of things. It's a healthy challenge. That healing aspect is important. While experts say there are benefits to the online world, especially for kids hoping to find connections with shared identities, a recent Surgeon's General advisory warns of ample indicators that social media can be harmful for the mental health of young people. A study of more than 6,000 youth published in the Journal of the American Medical Association found that adolescents who spend more than three hours per day on social media may be at heightened risk for mental health problems like anxiety and depression. Being able to remove yourself from these devices allows more time for you to socialize and engage in more human-to-human -human interaction. Doctors say it's important for parents to check in, especially during the summer months when social media usage may increase. The more time a child is in front of a screen, the less time they're interacting with the people around them. So whether that's family members, parents and siblings, or potentially friends and other children in their neighborhood, that is contributing to social isolation, especially if they're doing more of that kind of passive scrolling. Experts say sometimes to really drive home the point, you got to get outside, put down the phone, and practice what you preach. Dance, engaging with the art, whatever your, your family and your teen enjoys, making time for those things can be a, another way to create spaces where you're sort of replacing the use of technology with some other type of activity. So the science part of Bath Bomb is your baking soda and your citric acid. Oh, yeah. The parents slash artists here say they understand that not everyone can send their kids to camp, but say creative outlets are everywhere. You can use buttons, you can use strings, you can use pebbles, you could use whatever you have at your disposal to create what your heart and your mind want to create. Mine looks perfect. It does. I asked some of my social media friends, what are you doing to keep your kids busy and active this summer? I got everything from STEM and photography camps to making everyday chores a competition. Whatever it takes to keep those minds busy and the bodies active. Amber Strong, Scripps News. All right, check this out. We are getting a preview of what could be the next generation of inventors. Check this out. Two elementary students from Florida honored in this national competition. And this is a fourth grader, Lillian Long. She created a slime product that is safe for kids who have sensitive skin. Wow, very good. And then fifth grader Mahi Patel created software that has the potential to aid in the fight against cancer. Two years ago, one of my close family members was diagnosed with a lung disease, which caused him to die at a very young age. I created a software that can detect whether or not a person has lung cancer using AI, which is much more efficient, cheaper, and faster than the methods that we use today. Wow, good for her. Both students received awards in their respective grades. Congratulations. And tonight, witness four WNBA teams turn up the heat as they try to secure a spot in the playoffs. The State Farm Friday Night Spotlight on ION features the New York Liberty traveling south to take on the Atlanta Dream. Tip-off time, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And then it is off to the West Coast, where the LA Sparks are going to be hosting the Dallas Wings. And that is going to happen at 10 p.m. Eastern. Saturday marks one year since the Supreme Court's decision in Dobbs versus Jackson's Women's Health. It's a decision that effectively overturned Roe v. Wade. Coming up in the next hour of Scripps News Live, we're going to take you to Ohio, which might be the next big battleground state in our country to take the spotlight when it comes to reproductive rights. We're going to take a closer look at what's next in the political battle. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Thank you so much for joining me for this hour of Scripps News Live. I'm going to be back with you again at 3 p.m. Eastern. In the meantime, don't go too far because Lauren Magarino is up next.